Hello my dear friends, you're on the Military Summary channel and today we will discuss the situation in Ukraine on the 25th of February of 2024. Today we have a lot of very interesting updates, so let's start. And first let's talk about Kherson direction and let's start from Zaporozhye, part of Kherson area. According to information we have, the clash is still continuous in the Robotina, in the central part and the northern part of the village, but today we got a lot of very strange and weird reports. According, for example, to some different reliable mappers, the Russians took a decision to abandon their positions, abandon the central part of Robotina and to fall back to the southern area. But from the other side we got additional report from the Russians sources that the Russians conducted successful offensive, further offensive operation and they attacked the cemetery from uh, along one of the flanks. So it's very difficult to understand what was happening today and I'll try to explain to you the real situation in Rabotina for your better understanding. And for better understanding first we need to increase the numbers of updates at least for the previous uh, two days including the yesterday update and if you remember yesterday we was watching one video of Russian offensive operation this one and that was the landing operation and uh, this operation explains us a lot and first of all uh, the Russians of course according to this video managed to establish complete control over the central the southern part and the most important thing that the Russians were using significant number of infantry and personnel carriers for that operation and this is the most important part that the Russians were using significant number of forces. If we uh, move b further a little bit further, we're going to see the Russian infantry landed in the vicinity of the post office. Russian personnel carrier later moved back uh, to, let's say, to Novoprokopovka. So uh, how all these things are connected between each other? And the thing is that according to the Minister of Defense of Russian Federation, as a result of clashes on Kherson direction, entire Kherson direction, the Ukrainians lost just 30 soldiers. So the thing that you need to understand that Ukrainians uh, had or involved in Robotina defensive operation a very small amount of Ukrainian soldiers and the Russians from the other side based on the video just that we just watched used significant number of forces uh, to attack Robotina and to capture the foothold in this area and uh, uh, we know that currently uh, the most dangerous uh, let's say weapon that each uh, party has is FPV drones so obviously during the daylight the Russians managed to establish control over the central part but if you take a look at this video you're gonna see that most of the buildings in Rabotina were already reduced to ruins and there are not so many places where the Russians uh, have had possibilities to let's say stay for a night or to dig in deeper or something like this so that's why the Russians when the night came the previous night came took a decision to reduce the number of forces inside of Rabotina just with one purpose is to stay on the safe side to secure and to reduce the possible losses of upcoming Ukraine FPV drones drones counter-attacks so that's why most of the forces infantry uh, troopers uh, uh, personal carriers armored vehicles the Russians took off from Rabotina and sent them back to Novoprokopovka to be more precise to the trenches that located between Novoprokopovka and Rabotina. But from the other side we need to understand that the Russians of course left some forces, some garrison inside of Rabotina. We are not talking about thousands or hundreds of soldiers but probably a few tens of soldiers were left by the Russians inside of Rabotina with the purpose to secure the area and not to allow the Ukrainians to counter attack and to return their lost positions. That was the situation that took place at least during the previous night and this morning because the Ukrainians did publish significant number of videos with FPV drone strikes for example this is the first video of how uh, the Ukrainians were attack counter attacking the Russians with this type of weapon and they managed to damage some armored vehicles some personal carriers furthermore we got even the video from uh, the vicinity of the post office that the Russians captured also few let's say losses from the Russian side so that was a very smart decision from the Russian side to evacuate soldiers and to leave in Rabotina just rear guard forces with the purpose to hold the foothold and in case if Ukrainians counter attacks the Russians have always time to bring reinforcements back and when the morning came today this when the morning when the 25th of February comes started the Russians conducted another offensive operation probably along 0408 road in direction of the uh, cemetery with the purpose to cut the main Ukrainian forces the main Ukrainian stronghold the last Ukrainian stronghold in the northern part of the village 
So as I understand, according to my understanding of the situation, this is exactly what happened in Robotina during the previous 24 hours. Of course, we need more details and updates. But once again, some sources are saying that the Russians uh, moved some forces back to the south. But other sources are saying about, uh, say, a successful development of further offensive to the northern part of the village. So we need more details to understand and then we're going to change the map. During the previous 24 hours, the, Russia, the Ukrainians were trying to make some rotations uh, to bring some reinforcements or to stabilize the situation using the fields. The Ukrainians were redeploying some reserves from north to the south and they were, let's say, evacuating some wounded from the south to the north and the Russians were bombing uh, fields heavily. Furthermore, the Ukrainians tried to concentrate some reserves in Arekhov itself and the Russians managed to discover another Ukrainian temporary positions and attack this area with FAPS. And as a result of the strike, uh, we have significant damage. We have a uh, lot of ruins, a lot of destroyed buildings. And according to the author of these videos, Ukrainians had significant number of losses of the personnel that they were trying to use, were planning to use to stabilize the situation in Arabotina. Now let's move to Kherson, part of Kherson front line. And we got also a lot of very interesting details and updates from this territory. The Ukrainians continue publishing more videos of Heimer strike in this area. Probably this is the fifth day in a row when we got another video, another, let's say, uh, episode of another Heimer strike. As a result of that, another armored vehicle or air defense system was destroyed from the Russian side. And But the most important uh, information are coming, of course, not about, the, let's say, Heimer strikes, but to be more precise, from the, uh, the heads of the main directorate of intelligence, Budanov. Uh, to starting today, he started blackmailing or threatening the Russians, uh, saying that uh, it's very dangerous for Russia to stay in Crimea and to use Crimean bridge in the very near future because according to him they have already prepared a significant number of surprises for the Russians and very likely he was talking about the next attempts to destroy Crimean bridge but the question is why was he talking like that and today probably we can find an answer in this uh, situation from the article that according to information we have the head of Germany foreign affairs uh, Annalena Baerbock visited visited today Odessa region and she tr wasn't wanted to visit Nikolaev. Very difficult to understand what was her purposes of the visit of these two regions, but obviously this is the regions very likely that Ukrainians were planning to use to collect uh, and to keep and to store the German uh, long-range missiles. According to information we have currently, there is a very big debate in the German parliament regarding the supply and support of Ukraine with long-range missiles and to be more precise with Taurus missiles. According to information Mission we have the German parliament has already voted not to send Ukrainians the Taurus, but when talking about Taurus themselves, but when talking about long-range long missiles, very likely in the ne very near future, the German parliament will adopt this law and the Ukrainians will receive this type of weapon. Maybe everything was already decided and the visit of the Minister of Foreign Affairs was about that. And according to information we have, there was a very interesting case. Uh, the convoy of the Minister of Defense or Minister of Foreign Affairs of Germany was moving along the road and they were discovered by the Russian drone, probably with Lancet or maybe Arlan, and they, they received the signal, signal that their convoy was under, let's say, control and targeted by the Russian drones. But of course, the Russians didn't attack. But from the other side, the uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs, Annalena Berbok, took a decision, made a decision not to visit the areas she was planning to, and she returned back uh, to Kiev or to the safe place. So interesting details. And once again, within the next few weeks, we should expect a more provocation and more attempts to attack from the Ukrainian side the Crimean bridge and this is going to be obviously very interesting development of the situation now we are moving to the south direct south Donetsk direction to Donetsk direction we continue receiving significant number of updates and to tell the truth uh, today we got two videos of destroyed Patriots according to the authors on this video according to the author of this video we see another Patriot system that was trying to take a position somewhere along the tree lines uh, to hide itself and with the purpose to start uh, the, the dropping down the Russian aircrafts that were operating in the area of Avdiivka and Donetsk, South Donetsk direction, but the Russians managed to discover that system, and as a result of a tornado S strike, one Patriot system was destroyed. Uh, at this video we received at 9 a.m. of the local time of the 25th of February, and today we got uh, somewhere at um, uh, of 2 p.m. of the local time additional video with another Patriot system uh, on Donetsk direction that was discovered by the Russians. This video was July located correctly. Uh, the Russians managed to discover and as a result of an, another Tornado S uh, uh, strike, another Patriot system was destroyed to farm forces of Ukraine. 
So we see some wild hunting from the Russian side with the purpose to destroy and reduce as many as possible Ukraine air defense systems uh, on Donetsk direction because we understand, if you remember, during the last phase of battle for Avdiivka and a few days after the end of the battle for Avdiivka, the Russians just for one week lost up to 10 aircrafts uh, of different types, a little bit less, maybe 7 or 5, I don't remember for sure. And that was the reason um, the, the reason of the, those losses were the redeployment of air defense system as close as possible to the line of combat contact and the russians found the key found the key how to collapse the ukraine defense and as we discussed this is the combination of air defense uh this is the combination of aircrafts infantry artillery and lancet and if you if you use everything smart the ukrainians don't have chances to hold the line and to restore the let's say the balance the ukrainians need to restore first of all air superiority air defense superiority and they managed to do this for a short period of time but now we see one day to patriots it's too expensive it's three billions dollars wasted for one day uh, now we are moving to the situation on the ground the situation continues develops not in ukrainian favor according to unconfirmed unjulicated updates the russians established complete control over timiraziva street in nova mikhailovka additional russian troopers and forces continue advancing from Salotki in direction of vadiana and before attacks the russians first attacked the territory with stole from tower systems trying to clear the territory in front of them and after that they continue moving uh, so this is another episode and we see that this explosion took place very close to the main uh, supply road 0524 and if the Russians are, get, are able to get as close as possible to this road then the logistic and defense between Uglidar and Konstantinovka will be collapsed and the Russians will achieve another ground superiority in this area and the situation in this uh, sector can start developing in not Ukraine favor with let's say very big steps in miles. Now we are moving to the north in direction of Konstantinovka. We continue receiving significant number of updates from the southern part of the village. According to information we have, the Russians conducted another series of offensive operations inside of in direction of the uh, stronghold, and as a result of uh, more waves of attacks, the Russians established control over the first streets uh, to the south of the railways. Currently, we don't have any geolocated confirmation of the Russian progress, just reports from different reliable resources. But once again, I'll give you my opinion that, according to my understanding of the situation, the the Russians are not planning to cross the railways and the main purpose of the Russians is to get the railways and to secure the northern flank before further offensive operation in direction of Georgievka, Kurahova, Maximilianovka. If the Russians are able to establish and to secure the northern flank, this line, then they can uh, release significant number of forces and to continue movements further to the west. First of all, to secure uh, the strongholds between Krasnogorovka, Marinka and Georgievka and after that to continue further and attack Georgievka from the north and to bypass probably even Konstantinovka from the southwest. So this is approximately the plan of the Armed Forces of Russian Federation. Now we are moving to Avdiivka direction. We continue receiving significant number of updates, but still we haven't received even a single geolocated confirmation that the Russians as a result of offensive operation managed to establish control over Severne, but most of the reliable sources reported about control over the village. Furthermore, the sources are saying that the Russians, after they cleared and captured Severne, continue advancing further in direction of Tonink, at least three Russian resources reported about additional progress of the armed force of Russian Federation inside of the village by the name of Toninka. The Russians are pushing and according to updates we have, they have already established control over the first buildings and the streets inside of the village, yet without any geolocated confirmation of such progress. Uh, interesting reports are coming from uh, uh, Lastochkina. And the most important thing that is, according to the Minister of Defense of Russian Federation, they still haven't confirmed the Russian progress in this area. According to the Russians, as you know, uh, according to the sources on the ground, they have captured Lastochkina and Toninka. But usually, if the Russians capture this or that settlement, the next day the Ministry of Defense provide more details and confirmations of such a progress, but we still haven't received, which very likely confirms that Ukrainians still have some positions either in Lastochkina and maybe in the vicinity of Severna. Furthermore, according to Ukraine, official sources, the uh, the heads of uh, the speaker uh, of uh, Ukrainian group Tavria Lihavu reported that Ukrainians abandoned their positions in Lastichkina and moved to the positions, well-prepared positions in the western part of the settlement. So for now, this is the situation and we need more details, more updates to, make, to start making some changes on the ground. Very interesting video we got from the road between Achiretin and Keramik. On this video, for example, we can see the movements of uh, armored vehicle Bradley 
of armed forces of Ukraine and we see how the Russians established complete fire control over the road and as a result of uh, let's say anti-tank missile strike that uh, personal carrier Bradley was destroyed at some point Bradley stopped probably the driver received some signal that they were targeted by the Russian missiles maybe they were trying to uh, turn Bradley back but it was too late and the this personal carrier was destroyed this video is important that uh, because of the fact that the Russians currently have complete control over the road it's around three kilometers and these three kilometers is in the complete Russian fire and probably this confirms some about some further Russian plans to attack in this direction now we are moving to Bakhmut Artyomov's direction where we continue receiving significant details and updates and the most important and interesting video is coming from Konstantinovka. If we take a look at this video, according to information we have during the previous night, uh, during the previous days, the Ukrainians tried to redeploy a significant number of reinforcements and reserves to stabilize the situation in Chesovyar and Ivanovska. But the Russians managed to discover the movements of Ukrainian forces and when the train arrived in the railway station, the Russians attacked this territory with ballistic missile Iskander or Tornado S. And as a result of the attack, the entire railway station was completely destroyed. Currently, we don't know the real numbers of Ukrainian losses, but obviously, according to the picture, the losses were very heavy. Uh, furthermore, according to information we have, the situation continued worsening for the Ukrainian forces in the vicinity of Chasavyar and Ivanovska. The Russians continue offensive, and today we got very interesting video from the northeastern part, northeastern part of Ivanovska. On this video, we can see the Russian FPV drone strike against the Ukrainian warehouse, and as a result of strike, the entire warehouse was destroyed. And as you can see, the area where the warehouse this uh, strike took place, this video probably took place not today because there are still snow on the surface probably one or two weeks ago. But this video confirms that by let's say two or weeks, uh, two or one week ago, the Russians controlled just something like this, but not uh, these water reservoirs. And this is very important because most of the mappers currently show this entire area under Russian complete control. But the geolocation tells completely different situation, tells us completely different and opposite situation. Furthermore, the Russians continue bombing Chesovyar itself, try to destroy warehouses, ammo depots, FPV drone operators positions and so on. So if we describe the situation with a few words, the situation is getting worse and worse for Ukrainians in this area every single day. We haven't received anything from Belogorovka Severna direction, the same Sivir's direction, the same story almost from Tsirny. Just one report that we have already discussed in the previous video. As a result of successful conduction of um, uh, offensive operation, Rakow and Combo, the Russians first managed to enter uh, Tierney and later they took a decision to abandon their positions and to fall back. So that was a successful offensive and we were expecting today, at least according to information from the ground, that the Russians will have made more attempts to attack but for now we still haven't received any updates about any attacks on this direction. Now we are moving to Kupiansk. Once again, nothing interesting happened on this area as well. No reports, just the Ministry of Defense report. And according to the Ministry of Defense report, the Ukrainians on the entire Kupiansk direction lost 180 soldiers. And this is a very big losses for this front line in comparison with the previous five or six days. So, so we can say that something has started on this direction due to the Minister of Defense report. Interesting updates are coming from Kharkiv itself. We have already discussed this piece of news in the previous update that the Ukrainian authority deputy are saying that if Ukrainians lose Kupiansk, obviously they will lose Kharkiv as well. And when talking, it's that, that's talks and rumors from the Ukrainian authorities, but when talking about the situation on the ground, currently very interesting statistics is coming from the, uh, from, uh, the city. First of all, according to information we have, the prices for apartments is getting lower and lower. Uh, if you're, let's say if uh, a year ago you could buy apartments, let's say in Kharkiv for fifty thousand dollars, let's say now these apartments uh, cost let's say ten thousand dollars, which confirms that Ukrainians understand that they, it's better to sell now for money uh, for the money they can get right now and to run away. And there's a lot of people are selling selling their um, houses, apartments, offices, and try to evacuate from Kharkiv. According to raw statistic, every single day. 25 families leave Kharkiv in direction of the western part of Ukraine, which something like another improvement that very likely very soon something big is going to happen in the town, in the city, and the Ukrainians just try to stay in the, in the safe on the safe side. 
During the previous 24 hours, the Russians conducted a significant number of missile strikes all over the entire Ukraine. The Russians attacked the uh, airfields in the vicinity of Krapivninsky, trying to get the Ukrainian airplanes and uh, warehouses of missiles. Vaznesensk was under Russian very heavy fire. Furthermore, in the vicinity of uh, Harosha, the Russians managed to shut down another Ukrainian Su-24. So the Russians continue controlling the sky and closest rear of, uh, of the uh, to the line of combat contact. Very interesting details and information is coming from Kyiv to be more precise from Zelensky. Today Zelensky reported that the Russians knew about the about the Ukrainian plans of counteroffensive before even the Ukrainians started this greatest counteroffensive operation in 2023. That was his first important statement and probably the most loud statement that you've heard from Zelensky today. That's according to him since the beginning of the special military operation the Ukrainians lost 31,000 soldiers. Of course most of the people were surprised and shocked by the number because for example even according to my rogue calculations that I tried to build based on the Ministry of Defense of Russian Federation numbers, the Ukrainians since the beginning of the operation lost around 438,000 people, so 10 times, 11 times more than Zelensky provided us. And of course, people didn't believe him, started lots of speculations, rumors, but I'll give you my opinion about the number. And this number, is, this is a very smart step from Zelensky. First of all, I explained to you why. A few days ago, we were talking that Ukrainians were planning to start demobilization process. You remember that Ukrainians were planning to demobilize and the law is in the parliament uh, in, for discussion and obviously the Ukrainians will adopt the law. And now just imagine yourself. Uh, uh, let's say uh, Zelensky announced demobilization of uh, 30,000 soldiers. Th those soldiers who were mobilized, let's say, in the in the beginning of 2022. So that means that society will require to mobilize the same number of forces that he demobilized. So you, if you demobilize 30,000, uh, 30, that means that you need to mobilize 30 additional to replace them on the line of combat contact. Am I correct? Yes, I'm correct. So that's why Zelensky um, physically, in tricky way, reduced the number of losses to 31,000 soldiers just with one purpose. He needs to make demobilization on the paper. You need to understand, Ukraine is not Germany, it's not even Russia, it's not the United States of America. He can write anything he wants on the paper and nobody will ever even pos have possibility to ask him questions. If you don't think that it's possible, believe me, it's possible. Zelensky will announce of demobilization of 300,000 soldiers of armed forces of Ukraine. 300,000 soldiers. But physically, he will demobilize just 30,000 soldiers. Let's, let, let's just roll numbers, maybe plus minus in this or that direction. Obviously, Zelensky with um, demobilized 30,000 soldiers, we have a very beautiful picture. He will show this picture all over the entire Ukraine, showing, let's say, happy soldiers returning back from a uh, line of combat contact all over the Ukraine in their villages to their families. He will show hundreds of such cases on Ukrainian TV, in, Ukra uh, in the world, in CNN, BBC and other uh, different media. And everybody will believe that, yes, Zelensky did uh, demobilize. 300,000 soldiers, but he will demobilize them just on the paper. And this demobilization on the paper from one side will increase his reputation among soldiers, among personal, among society and people, but from the other side it will give him possibility to replace these demobilized soldiers with the real number of soldiers, not on the paper, but physical people who will be sent to Avdiev, Karabotina, Kupensk, to another meat grinders all over the entire line of combat contact. So this is the main purpose of Zelensky to demobilize on the paper big amount uh, to demobilize physically just a part a very small part maybe a tenth part of the number and to then to mobilize uh, the necessary number of soldiers and everybody will be happy it's a tricky way and probably the most uh, strange and weird reports are continue coming from the border with Poland another video with grain another act of sabotage from Poland from Polish authorities another let's say let's say economical war between Ukraine and the act of economical war between Poland and, and Ukraine. And before we start discussing this, I'll remind you that currently there is a NATO military exercises on the border with Belarus and Kaliningrad. The NATO countries continue concentration of forces. So you may ask, what is the connections between these two events? And I explain to you everything. First of all, we need to understand that sooner or later, all these things on the border between Poland and Ukraine will end with one thing. Of course, with casualties, with casualties, with casualties and furthermore with casualties from both sides. Sooner or later, either the Ukrainian, uh, let's say, drivers, truck drivers or the Polish farmers, sooner or later, somebody will die. 
it's obviously during to this conflict and something tells me that this is exactly what these countries are trying to achieve as the, and from the ukrainian side as i understand this can be used as the plan b for ukraine because now uh, ukraine has just one enemy and this is russia but when talking about poland we see that maybe this is the second enemy or at least ukraine want to show Poland as the second enemy and if and when the time comes Ukraine using all these videos with grain with all the situation can use this picture can use these trains can use the grain uh, conflict and to tell people that maybe Russia is not an enemy maybe the Russians really was protecting their interest but the enemy was always NATO and Poland and they will show this picture and of course everybody will believe or something like this but from the other side we understand that currently there is a very big group of uh, nato forces we see a conflict on the border and once again if there are going to be casualties or some provocations on the border from ukrainian side let's say then the nato we're gonna have possibility to use paragraph 5 of the nato charter and to enter the western part of ukraine and let's say to create a buffer and secure zone and to reduce the risk uh, on the territory of poland everything might happen i think that both plans can, can have can be implemented by the parties and only think what kind of solution decision will make ukrainian and nato authorities in these cases and that's it for today military summer channel reminds you condemn any violence in the world thank you for your watching subscribe to my channel put your likes to my patreon and have a good day bye bye